and we have a choice. Are we going to allow the system to perpetuate a lie or are we going to get Martin case and all these big high profile cases? They believe the jails are filled with people that do nothing. What do you think everybody's Two young men who had bright promising futures. So where do we stand when it comes to privilege in America? There are people dying in my neighborhood every day. in your place of truth. Criminalized, they are sometimes victimized, almost in Other minorities do not get the news coverage. I would open the phone, let's talk this out. I'm calling for calm. 107.5 WGCI, you are live with Kendra G. Call us right now, 866-9-RICKY, 866-9-RICKY. Ricky Smile, the morning show. What's up, it's Angela Yee, and we are back on The Breakfast Club. So what is it we're really talking about here? Race, prejudice? The fact that we're talking about race is indicative of the prejudice. The prison system is really one of the biggest businesses in America today. All right, black lives matter, yes. Latino lives matter, too. Asian lives matter, Indian lives matter, Muslim lives matter. So everything's got to be about race all the time because it sells to the news, it sells to the community leaders. The stereotypes are real. Yes, it, it, is. Are. it is. For a reason. They're not made up out of thin air. Everyone, of course, has strong opinions on one side or the other. But if we're going to really grow as a community, mm -hmm. as a society, we need to start listening to all perspectives. Compared to a, a Caucasian person, you always have to prove if you're there. They never want to believe you on face value. Oh, you're supposed to be innocent until you've proven guilty, but apparently that ain't We can't just talk about race. We can't just talk about race. Well, you have the story that the mainstream media is going to say anyway. And I think the cops have a right to be suspicious. I get it. I get it. Attorney Jackie Stein. I'm his attorney. I don't trust him. I ain't pulling over for no cop unless there's witnesses. We have another opportunity to hype up a black and white dispute and make the black kid look bad. Whether you're black or white, whether you're Christian or Muslim, we are all one big family. Chicago. The whole world is watching us right now. So, I guess today your last day, huh? Yeah. My dad changed his mind. Hey, man, you really leaving to go for the higher life, bro. <laughs> like, get a good look at what you leaving behind, man. Talk to him, man. Look at it. See it? What am I missing? Everything. Come on, G, we got to go to class, man. Hey, man, relax. No more, man. Relax, everybody. Frank. Why you got two phones and no minutes, G? One for my girls and one for Frank's mom. <laughs> Come on, hurry up, guys. Hey. Hurry up. You are an interesting brother, Mr. Stubbs. You told a lot of good things. Confident, outspoken, professional. All lies. I'm terrible. <laughs> Confident, but not cocky. I like that. But my question to you is, does Jackie Styles know when to get mean? If by mean, you mean tough. A record shows I do. Okay, all right then, tough guy. How's a salary of 120,000 per year plus a 50,000 signing bonus salary? 250 plus 50. Oh, he is tough, okay. <laughs> okay, well then, uh, I guess we'll just have to settle on 100. 120 plus 50. It is. <laughs> 120 plus 50 it is. And welcome to the team. Hi, I'm A.J. Canton. For seven years, I've served the county as an assistant state's attorney. I've put countless criminals behind bars and helped clean up our streets. But now I need your help with my next challenge, cleaning up the mayor's office. It's time to set those old politics aside and give this city the fresh start it deserves. This fall, vote Canton. Thank you. And cut. All right, good. That's lunch. So, talk to me. A little antiquated, don't you think? No, no, no. Simple and to the point. No flash. We just run it a million times. 
People will see that I'm genuine. Sure, works for me. If you have a moment, uh, Mr. Abernathy from the city council is holding on to. Not a problem. But do me a favor, transfer that call to my cell. It's about that time. Got to get my first time Barack on. <laughs> Today we're going to be continuing the conversation, except this time about the uh, the genotype. Now, what's fascinating about genetics? What? You want me to help you out tonight? Nah, man, straight. Pretty much done with all the boxes. We ain't got as much to do as anywhere. Good, cause I wasn't trying to help you out anyway. <laughs> Look, man, I don't know why you just don't stay here, bro. Grab a spot, find a seven of my keys. Tell that to my pops. Brown eyes. Does anybody here have brown eyes? Can anybody? Anybody? Just as long as you're there on time. Well, I'm having dinner ready by six. Just be home by then, okay? Bye, boy. <laughs> Coley? Yeah, the boy got me frying chicken. Oh, uh, the weather's definitely changing, brother. Outside of the Starbucks and the pool be popping up all over the place, this community has definitely benefited from you. Well, we've done enough to tear it down. As well, just build it right back up. Obviously, that is very true. But we sure have got much more to do, though. Man, when are you coming back to church? Who, me? No, me. You. <sighs> Oof. I'm just happy I could help. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> well, thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Uh, thanks for getting church squared away. But hey, you wouldn't want to forget this. Mm. Absolutely. I love you, man. Yeah, Thank I you. Love you right back. Come on, man. All right. All right now. All right. Yes. Sam. Jackie. Sam. Hey, hey. Sam. <laughs> Jackie. Mm. Jesus. Thank you. So we still got the hardwood floors. We got the nice marble in here. Now, we are both upstairs. You're going to be right down the hall. I'm in the master bedroom. But you ain't got to call me master. We have our own wings, bachelor style. So this is home, boy. This is it. It's not our home. I don't feel right. Well, how do you think that makes me feel? I lived in that house five years before you even came along. But if we keep in your mama right there, and right there, then we all live here. I know we moved a long way from everything we know, but I might have a little something up my sleeve here. You know, your pop might need a little help getting back forth to the south side. Go over there and get some Harold's chicken. I got something, come on. you get this? I <laughs> got you. <laughs> this is cool, Dad. Can I take it for a spin? Yeah, absolutely. And the seats vibrate too, boy, but don't you get no ideas. <laughs> if you listen to the press, it's always, he's from the south side of Chicago. He is, but they don't talk about how he was moved from the south side because his father got a promotion. Right. I've been around white people in cars. I've gotten pulled over and I could, I could feel the energy where the cop is kind of just hounding me. Where's your license? Where's your registration? Do you have any criminal charges in your history? You what know, was he doing in that neighborhood? They just moved to that neighborhood. They were new to the neighborhood. Moved from the inner city. Exactly. So you gotta register now? You gotta register He's when you move into a new neighborhood? Exactly. Oh, exactly. Turn off the vehicle, sir. This car you got yourself here. Thank you. You must be new to the neighborhood. I know most of my kids on this beat. Yeah, my dad just bought it. Mm. Well, on behalf of the community, welcome you to the neighborhood. Hmm? I'm over on Green Bay Road. You need anything, you just uh, give me a holler, okay? <laughs> Good to see you. All right, give me some. Right here. Little. Yeah. We did it in football. <laughs> you have a good day now. We're about to have a game. You want in? No, I'm good. You make it.
a 10. You can run full. I told you I'm good, bro, man. I'm not even dressed to play. Come on. Man, all we're doing is having some fun. Who cares what you're wearing? I mean, if you're scared, then just say you're scared. Yeah. <laughs> I don't appreciate you pressuring me like that, Zac Efron. <laughs> it's not like that. How about just you and me, then? Don't worry. I'll sit this one out. You two have fun. I just want to see what you can do. You keep pressuring me, I'm going to show you what I can do. Now who's taking this all wrong? I told you I'm good. Well, who killed Brian? Because if you think about it, we've seen some cases in the past where... It, it they should look into Brian's past and his parents' past. See you around, Southside. <laughs> Southside. Don't let him get to you. I'm Zoe. It's your choice, killer. Cully. You live around here? I live here now. Man, he really messed you up. You should get that looked at. There's a coffee shop around the corner. You want to buy me coffee? You're cute. No, getting you some ice. You coming or what? Still, I had a reason to ask why. Why she cut me off the chain and let me fly. And no, I'm not going to be the one to say that we could have had it any other way so i'll keep running from what i call upon for help this loving from which i can move on and yes i know she will keep me from the rain when the sun comes out i'll be back again for you all right everybody find a seat Okay, everybody go ahead and get settled in. Get everything clean. What do you think you're doing? I sit here. Okay. It's possible. Awesome. I see your lip is healing up nicely. I see if you want to try another cheap shot. Right here. You got balls, son. That's what you drug dealers. One might find that offensive. I'm not a drug dealer. I'm a classical violinist. No way. Heck no. Rolling Stones or the Beatles? You sound racist. No, no, okay, I like music. Wonderful. What do you drive? Go ahead and pull out your music. W three twenty five CIA. You don't know about rap music, bro. Gentlemen, I'm wearing the tie. I'll do the talking. Um, is that what it takes to run the class? Cause, uh, heck, I can borrow my dad's tie tomorrow, and then I can be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. You're not funny. All right, once again. Gonna be working on the circle. Like stones. Half of you are gonna be working flats, half of you gonna be working sharps. Keeping up with the winners like a constant trip. What's better than some me doing bigger things? Can I sit here? Yeah. Where are you from? Chicago. Yeah, but like where? South side. 83rd Angle side. I don't know what directions. Is that far? Something like that. By the way, how's that busted lip treating you? You kids in courts lately? So Zoe from Friendly Hills got jokes. Just to make it perfectly clear, I was born and raised in Humble Park. You didn't say that last night. Last night? What happened last night? Yeah, Coley, what happened last night? Nothing happened last night. We talked and we went home. Our own homes. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. A guy who doesn't take the first opportunity to lie about getting in some strange girl's pants. At least she admits she's strange. Ah. Hey, yo, G. Look, Southside, I'm having a party next weekend after Friday's game. You should come. Is he gonna be there? And everyone else. I gotta bring my boys. Sure. I'll see you there. <laughs> what? 
Come on, so ain't nobody gonna tell me that we was coming to a Kings match? More medieval for this guy. Oh, oh for real? This all you, Mr. Jefferson? Hey, yo, that's your child. That's your child. If I had a new we was coming there, I would have brought all that. Nah, nah, you feel nah, me? Nah. You know how much money I get paid serving nah, me food? That mm. type of party tonight, Jay. Yeah, what type of party is it, Cody? What am I supposed to do? You do know there's females in that house, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I know it's females in there, but every one of them females is a case. I'm not trying to catch. How they look, though? You tell me. How they look? No, hold on. But what they look like, though? No, I'm asking you because. Can we just have one conversation we about this? What are you yelling times. at me? Stop. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Don't you think you had enough? Hey, we gotta go talk. Look, I got a guy downstairs, but you gotta be straight up with him. No screwing around. He's my buddy. I only got like six on me. That's fine, but I need your word. Don't sell him no $50 Tylenol. Come on, Joe. He thinks I'm lonely. Why'd you even bring him here? I'm about to, to head out. Okay, man, you be safe. Oh, yeah, yeah, hold on. Let me, let me. So, this is my room. Wow. Siege? Yep, Siege. I just wanted to say, uh, I think there's a lot of beauty in this world. I don't need to be so angry all the time. You play? Yep. And I sing. I have a band. Listen, man, I want you to get home safe. Hey, look at me. Your life matters to me. Stop touching me. You this is a night of love. Listen. Shh. No, it ain't. Let's bury the hatchet. You don't go to school with none of these other kids, right? <laughs> no way. Uh. Graduated in 2010. But I used to sit for Zoe and a few of these other kids mm. back in high school. Okay. All right. Well, you know me one of my boys. You go to that school now. You're like the surrogate big brother? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you took care of drinks, so I guess that makes you the big sister. I guess so. Let's come together and end this darkness. Yep. Pull over your hair. Have a drink with me? That was part of my plan all along. Little punky rooster. Yeah, now come on now. Oh. Wanna know a deep dark secret? I learned on the accordion. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Really? Yeah. Oh, my dad, he had this bachata group. And sometimes they switch it out for the rhythm guitar. You wanna know another secret? Oh, really? Am I that transparent? Are you a little light? <laughs> Shut up. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I think your girl left. What time is it? The party's over. I'll drive home. You need to drive. No, I got you. We got you. We come in peace. I'm good. I'm good. I can drive. Whoa, I'm good to drive, bro. Come on. Thanks, bro. Your breath is super offensive, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, just a little. May May! May May! May May! May May! <laughs> <laughs> Why is it black people always drive these big SUVs? Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna let you slide because you're drunk. You know my BMW? Connects straight to your phone, Bluetooth and everything. Some were just born lucky. No, 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 no. Look, my dad didn't become rich because of his generosity. But it wasn't given to him either. I can't tell you how many kids I know just get cars for their birthday. Happy 16th, son. Oh, you failed three classes? You get an Audi instead of a Lexus. No. We went 50-50. I earned $15,000 working the golf course. It took me three years. I think all of us got something from nothing. You do know where I come from. People have real problems. Can't help being born where you're born, man. Saves a wealthy kid with a BMW. Do you not see what you're in right now? You keep talking like you don't live here. Like you're just visiting. 
What have you got to prove, man? Where is the shame in coming from a nice neighborhood? My parents worked hard to get to where they are, and from the looks of it, so have yours. I don't feel like I'm welcome here. That's all in your head! Who is it telling you to- Nobody! When I was seven years old, I remember my parents took me out to the mall downtown. I was standing there holding my mom's hand, and I saw another kid there holding his mom's hand, only I had never seen anyone like him, except maybe on TV. So at seven years old, I was unfamiliar with him, man. But I am asking you, is that my fault? You're not seven no more, Brian. Thanks for the ride. The house is up here on the left. that? I don't know. Probably somebody blew a tire on that pothole again. Uh, I guess. Where are you going? Uh, I'll check it out. You just left, is that right? I drove out, I pulled up, and I seen someone laying on the floor, and I ran over. I shook him. That's why my hands got bloody. So you kill kids and you sell drugs, right, LaShawn? No, you put that in my mouth. I didn't say that. You said that. Why would you put that on me? Marcus, Marcus. Tell me what happened so we can all go home. Come on, man. I know you're used to protecting your friends, but it's not going to work. Because you boys right now, my two partners got them in a room. One of them's already talking. I wouldn't be surprised if he was throwing out a sheet against you right now. That's a lie. They wouldn't do that. You don't sound too sure about that. They don't care about what I got to say, Dad. And they mind I did it. And y'all mind I'm a murderer. And y'all mind... Bam. Oh, and now we have a warrant which entitles us to search your premises. Any idea what we should expect to find when we tour that house up there? I don't know, man. Now, can I talk to my lawyer? I'm tired of talking to y'all. You know what that is? Oh, yeah. No, take a really good look. More like cocaine in the mirror. Whatever, it's not mine, so what's up? I have reports saying that you two were in a fight not too long ago. It wasn't a fight, it was a heated basketball competition. What were you fighting about? Are you even trying to listen to him? We got past that. I can do something for you if you give me something. You can go fetch me some weed. No, I'm talking to my lawyer, though. Talk that. Get your hands off me. Get your hands off me, man. Sit up. You want to come out? How about I lock you up and lose the key? How'd you like that? I got, I got this. I got this. And I'll find you in a friggin' dumpster. Listen, you don't want to lose it again. Not on a piece of trash like this. It's not going to be like the last guy. Who pulled the trigger? Who pulled the trigger? Your mama. That's who pulled the trigger. Power 92.3, Terrence Palmer here. Like everyone, I am talking about Brian Suttermill, the boy from the Burbs, killed in front of his own house. Mr. Coley Styles, you're being charged with murder in the first degree and the death of Mr. Brian Suttermill. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And how do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Now, murder happens every day here in Chicago. When it happens outside of the city, that's when it makes national news. The Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Sun-Times, Red Eye, all have devoted front page coverage above the fold. There's a lot of unconscious bias that goes on. It happens with all of us. It's very natural because your perspective is based on your environment and what you've experienced. ASA Canton. Yes. Now, you've succeeded in getting life sentences your last three murder trials. Will you seek life again? 
Now, Jake, you know I'm not prepared to discuss that at this time. Uh, do you believe that you're being a black man in this particular case puts you in an awkward position? Look, I'm not the first black prosecutor to try a black defendant, and I won't be the last. Every murdered child deserves front page coverage. Like, I just saw a video recently in the news where people literally saw a kid dying. Yeah. And were, like, walking away because they were scared. So was it a hate crime? Was he killed because he was white? Mr. Stiles, given that this is the first charge against you, I'm going to set bail at $3 million. Who did the judge think his dad is? P. Diddy? Jay-Z? This is not Blue Ivy that's in jail right now. Whether you, um, you cause suffering to someone, it is a mistake. Unless and you plan to murder them on purpose, then it's not a mistake. With Coley being accused of murder, we have to look at it from a, from a Christian perspective. We have to look at it uh, through those Christ lens. Your Honor. I believe one or even two million would be sufficient. Even those figures would be near impossible for my client to obtain, but three million is nowhere within his reach. Black man to black man, I would be sympathetic, except I chose to make something of myself while he chose a different path. So no, I'm not in an awkward position. He and I, in more ways than one, are on completely opposite sides. And my team and I are going to make sure that this city and the jury see that as clear as day. See, the lamestream media wants to keep the narrative going of black versus white, black versus white, because that's how a lot of these guys make money. The news media, some of the community organizers, they got to keep black and white people fighting because it's a good story. And when we realize they're sitting at the big table getting rich and we're down here fighting and killing each other over nonsense. It's a never ending struggle for all minorities, but for some reason, it's forgotten that the fact it's not just black injustice in America. Uh, Mr. Franklin, you're no stranger to cases like this. Some might even say that you helped write the book on putting murderers like this away. Now, that's not a question, is it? Well, but don't you think that it could send the wrong message? Now, that's a question, but no, I don't. Now, I doubt you would ever exhibit such a breach of etiquette as they ask me to cut bail in half, were not for the simple fact that you're defending your son. Let this be the only incident. Sorry, Your Honor, forgive me. A.J. Canton didn't ask me to join this case. I went after the prosecution for the sole purpose of joining that team. And it just so happens that the lead prosecutor is my good friend, Mr. A.J. Gann. Let us remember the family of Coley Styles. Remember, Chicago, we haven't heard it all yet. There'll be no more. No, 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 no. An $80,000 advance. That's a lot of cash, Jackie. I know. I feel terrible even having to ask. And you'll be acting as his attorney. So what you're telling me is you want 80 grand and you'll be pretty much unavailable to work for me for the next several months after I've only hired you a few weeks ago. Sir, with all due respect, I can't just leave my son in there. Check it. I think you're a good guy, but I can't afford you that much money. However, I'll keep you on a leave of absence and in lieu of pay, I'll arrange additional support for your team from one of our younger counsel. But I, I can't afford that. Don't you worry about that. It's on me. You just worry about closing this case and helping your boy. You take whatever time you need. Your job will be waiting after you win. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Thank you. I mean, church, the world doesn't need more religion. What we need is more love. And once we love one another in spite of our differences, once we love one another in spite of our flaws, once we love one another in spite of our differences, we lead people to Christ. All right, inmates, we got a new one. Ezekiel 2230 says, I looked for someone among them that would build up the wall and stand before me on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. Preacher man, come meet your new neighbor. But I found no one. Church, we need to stop judging. I mean, we can't all be saints in the church. I know I'm not. I know you guys are saints and you guys are innocent, but I know I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I've been on the block. I probably sold to some of you when I was coming up on Stony Island. Well, you know me. Look, we all are and were flat broke and in need of someone to pay our debt. And the only one worthy died on Calvary. I mean, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Look at your neighbor. 
Grab their hand. And let them know I'm with you. Let them know I'm with you. I am with you. Because if not you, then who? Amen. Tension is rising all across the world, and social media is heating up. On your newsfeed, you scroll, and you see the face accused of the crime, and right there, that's, you know, judge and jury. Blacks have to work twice as hard to accomplish what white people get. That's not true. In the past few decades, I mean, thousands of young Latino men shot and killed by police officers. Can you name me one? You think, what, white people just get everything handed to them? I can give you two. Ricardo Diaz Seferino, Gardenia 2013. Antonio Zambrano Montes, Bosco Watts 2015. Both killed by state police officers. And those state police officers, they went back to work like nothing happened. It's easy to see why a police officer would look at Coley and think, oh, he's a murderer, because that was his mindset anyway. His mindset was already, he's up to no good. It's almost like we've become desensitized, and this is like the, the norm. This is just America now. Then as you grow up, you realize the stuff we used to do as teenagers, and then going into adulthood, we was basically being racist and stereotyping mm -hmm. each other. You think you have it harder than me? No, I know I do. So. Can you help me? I, I, I need you to dig around, see what you can find, anything. I got a jacket. I'm sure it crossed your mind. That's a pretty weak alibi. Frank, you know Coley. Do I? Do you? Hey, you were great, Dad. But sometimes, you know, a kid can slip. You know, and there's just nothing you can do. Well, I know what I need to do, and that's prove he didn't do this. Now, my question to you is, will you help me? You already know I will. Where we're gonna start, Mr. Boss? Mr. Shaw, is everything okay? Are you familiar with the Coley Styles Brian Sutherland case? I am, and I'm sure you know better than I do that it's it's pretty clearly open and shut. I mean, don't you think so? It doesn't really matter what I think. You've just been promoted, Mr. Boss. You'll be taking second chair for the defense on this trial, a trial that I need handled with care. Mr. Stiles is a great investment, an investment that we need to get back to work. Do you understand? Good. Well, you should get going. You have a lot to get to deal with. I wasn't in bed yet because the baby was screaming. That's when I heard the bang and I thought, I don't know, maybe an old car somewhere was having trouble. It took me a moment to calm her down and I realized I was still hearing screams. Peeked out the window and saw Bill and that black kid. Any idea how long from when you heard the shot to when you looked out the window? I'm sorry, one minute, five minutes. I was focused on my daughter at the moment. Uh, how well did you know Brian? I used to be with the boys a few years ago. I don't feel like much of a friend discussing this, but Brian was a pothead. Nothing beyond what kids tend to do. I mean, I was a now and then smoker myself, but you become a dad, you get delivered from all that, and. You don't want your kids around people to do the things you used to do yourself. I need his Weevilos uniform. I boxed it. <sighs> Which box? Donations. I don't want you in here. I'm keeping everything. I'm making something for him. Don't wear that. Shut the box on the back. Styles. I'm a detective working on his case. What, WPD? Nothing like that. Private. I'm looking for Coley's dad, family friends. Yeah, well, I got nothing to hide. Well, then, hey, you don't mind if I ask you some questions? 
He was at your party that night, right? Him and Brian? Yeah, and everyone else in town, so... Did you have any contact with him that night? Yes, I did. But he didn't say anything about killing Brian, so... How well do you know Colby? Get to the point. Well, I've known Colby all his life, right? And I'd like to prove that he didn't do this. And if, like you said, he didn't mention it to you or act suspiciously all night, then you might be somebody who can help. They found him standing over Brian's body. Don't that mean he did it? Actually, no. It doesn't. But the cops don't have any other suspects. And they aren't looking. I can see that you care, that he meant something to you. We need your help, all right? I need to get inside this, and you're the only person that can do that. What do you need me to do? Brian's world. The people in him, I need to get inside his life. Can you do that? Yeah, I think I can do that. Mr. Stiles? I'm Nancy Avas. Jerry sent me over. Yeah, come on in. That's Frank right there. Yeah. yeah, have a seat right here. Yeah, I think I remember seeing you uh, in the office there. How many cases like this have you worked? Um, well, I just passed the bar last summer, so, you know, this will be one of my first, but I've helped in a lot of civil cases. Here, um, I pulled some files on similar cases we can look at. That is the state of Illinois versus Elias Braley. He was an African-American teenager who was caught on a parking lot camera shooting a white teenager. They got a reduced sentence of 10 years after proving he was attacked first. Look, my son doesn't belong in there another 10 minutes, let alone 10 years. I think it's only fair that I put this out there right from the start. Okay, I've reviewed the facts of Colby's case, and I am not entirely convinced that your son is innocent. Now, I'm gonna do whatever I can to help, but I think the best line of pursuit may be to admit that he shot the boy first while showing how the earlier altercation provoked Brian into attacking him. The toxicology test proved that they'd both been drinking that night. It's an option, Jackie. Huh? We've been racking our brains here. I've come up with nothing. That still doesn't explain how Coley got a gun. Coley doesn't own a gun. How can you be so sure? You know, maybe one of the other two boys he was Because with... he's my son. I know my son. And he wouldn't do this. I know it. I believe it. This is something my kids are upset, my wife is afraid, and we've never been afraid before. It is a little too close to home, this story. I actually admire the guy for sticking around, even if he did it and calling for help. Because what are the cops going to think the first time they roll up and you they see... You admire him? But what's the first thing they're going to see when they see a black kid hunched over a seemingly dead body covered in blood? I'm surprised they didn't shoot him. Oh, they well, think... there you go. You think A.J. Canton is an Uncle Tom? It's not his fault that he's a black man from the inner city that has to take down another black man from the inner city. I mean, can you think about what he's probably thinking? You know, I, I got to tell you, I've met A.J. Canton. I think he's a fine man. I think he's got a thankless job. Listen, personally, I think the brother's OK. OK, he kind of reminds me of something like a black Harvey Dent. You know what I'm saying? He's lucky he was. What's up, man? You know I'm too young and too pretty to be up here all laid out. I mean, I, I give you yeah. young, but that's about it. What? <laughs> man, you better get out of here. Uh, look what the uh, wind blew in. Be nice, Ron. He's nice with the pockets. Yeah, yeah. What's up, my brothers? AJ. Well, what up, Joe? <clears throat> Good? So what's up, y'all? Why it's so dead up in here? Huh? <clears throat> hey, Bobby. What you got on the game, man? I think I might want to get a piece of that. Ronnie Ron. What it is, brother? <laughs> you keep saying that. Brother. So, uh, we still brothers? I'm sorry, what? Nah, I think you heard me just fine. Yeah, whatever, man. So what we having today, man? Bobby, you know how I like to get my hair cut, man. So you tell me, hmm? What's really good? All right. All right. Let's put it out there. So what's up? Y'all got a problem with me or something? Is the money that good, AJ? There it is. Is the money that good? <laughs> Here I am thinking I could at least come to the shop and not have to hear this garbage. Hey, you brought the garbage to the shop, brother. All right, Ron. Seems like you got an opinion about the thing. The floor's all yours. Go ahead, lay it all out for us, Ron. Why you gotta get your nose up and everything? Hmm? Nah, I mean, I see you. You jump from one high-profile situation to the other, but you don't actually try to help anyone, let alone your own people. I mean, not unless, of course, there's a sea of reporters out there shoving cameras in your face. So what happened, man? First of all, 
Who you think you're talking to right now? Hmm? You see, it seems like you got all these opinions, right? But I don't recall you doing a thing for the advancement of black folks. Okay, so you're doing something includes taking down a black man. Oh. So, check this out. When Ra-Ra got shot, right, after he got pulled over, it was cool for me to prosecute that white man, right? No, hold on, hold on. No, man. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's cool for me to prosecute the white man, right? But as soon as a white boy from the Burbs loses his life, and I take the case, now y'all want to come at me like this. Oh, you act like you ain't getting paid. Oh, man, come on, Like, man. you want us to think that you're just doing this because it's your civic duty. It is my civic duty. A young man got murdered. See, y'all seem to be forgetting exactly where it is I come from. What? Ain't nobody forget where you come from. Anybody forget where you come from? It's you that forgot where you come from. What? That's the second time you act like you didn't hear me. Let me ask you a question, bro. Go ahead, shoot. Where's the bullet? Oh, shoot. No, where's the bullet? Here we go. As a matter of fact, where's Here the we go. gun? All right, you're going to prosecute a young black man, and you ain't even got no physical evidence. You see that, Bobby? This brother is now a lawyer. Don't seem like it's that hard to do. Mm -hmm. Not nowadays. Okay, look, we all know that you work for yours, AJ, mm -hmm. all right? And you're running for mayor and all that, and you want to be the leader. But the question is, why you got to take this case? So tell me, Ron, who you think should take the case? Huh? You see, I'm getting real sick and tired of this, y'all. When they started tearing down the community, I stepped up. When they ripped the guts out of the Taylor homes, I was there right beside the people. But I can't make a difference if I just stay right beside the people. I have to lead and provide justice for all the people. Let me tell you something, brother. I can remember when Harold Washington, uh, one of the greatest to ever grace this city, would come through these doors almost every Sunday after services at Blackstone Church. He'd come through that door and he'd sit down right here, right in that seat. And I remember it like it was yesterday. And he would take time away from actually running this city to help educate and spread positive messages to every man, woman, and child that came through that door. He was definitely one of the best of us. And I still feel him beside me today. So you still want that lining up for all the cameras gonna be in your face? <laughs> Man, why you gotta try to get so deep on a Sunday? You can't take the sermon, get out to church. <laughs> it's all good, though. It's all good, AJ. It's all good. And we'll always have a chair for you, man, even after you lose this case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, may the right man win, then. All right? All right. You're going through? It's not meant to destroy you, but rather to develop you. <laughs> Why can't I just enjoy you playing? Hey, Missy, you said I could have anything I want for my birthday. This is what I want. Come on, back straight, arms out. Ah, I got this. Even if you feel alone, think of me and you'll be home. Of all the things that we may never know, don't worry, I'll be there by your side. Yeah. Happy birthday, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, bless that you are George. Pray for me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment, Lord. We trust, Lord, that you would continue to bless his life with seasons of uncommon favor, that he would know, Lord, that the pressures of life are simply meant to develop, promote, and to qualify him for all that you have in store for him. Live in him, express yourself through him, and may he know you in a sovereign way. We thank you for it, Lord. Amen. You have no prince. So he, they shouldn't even be holding him. If right. anything, he should be out on bond. He was screaming for help. Why would he do that if he was the killer? I don't know, man. So I'll probably go miles away then call the police or something <laughs> like that. No one expects a killer to stick around and call for help. 
Isn't that the perfect cover? He was murdered by someone. Right. We still don't know who. Didn't they find him with a gun? What's this guy's name? Coca-Cola, no styles. And you bringing a wallet back to that's not a good look. Like you robbed him and killed him and then came back. But the you... white kid was standing over the black body and everybody ran up. They were like, hey man, what happened, man? Right. First thing they would think is we need to okay? call. Right, yeah. 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 It's tragic yeah, yeah. for his family. It's tragic. But imagine I mean, how tragic it is for Holy's family. They do not put people in prison for nothing. What? Where have you okay. been for like right. the past 200 years? Basically, he's toast. That's what all the kids are saying at the school anyway. Well, I think they have good as a chance as anyone. You really believe that? Yeah. I mean, try it in the city, so, you know, race is not really going to be a question. Babe, you might as well do it on the moon. <laughs> I mean, it's not about the location. Location doesn't mean anything. It's about public perception. You can't take race out of that. He's not being persecuted because he's an African-American kid. He's being persecuted because he's covered with blood with a dead kid at his feet. This is still a world of race issues. Yes, right? Yes. And this trial is going to be Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill again and again and again. Uh -huh. And it's not going to stop. And those people up there with their, their newspapers, they're going to be force feeding us articles about their local opinion uh, you all remember the Central Park Five. Of course. 1989, a woman is jogging through the park, is raped. Five men, all black, stand accused and professor. I'm sorry, I'm right? sorry, Quinn. What is your point? To get perspective, to get personal. In 2002, on, on what? This is those not the men same were case. vindicated when the real rapist was found okay. through DNA. If the roles were reversed, they would have seen Brian as innocent. You're Muslim. Oh, yeah. I'm Jewish. We have fears. We're both, to an extent, afraid of the natural prejudices that come with us as being who we are. That's what this whole case is about. I don't believe that racism is something that we come into the earth as humans naturally participating in. I believe it is a condition that is taught. Why does everything in Chicago have to be about race? Craig, at the end of this day, it has to be about the facts. Okay, and to accept that it isn't, it isn't something I'm prepared to do. Well, then I hope you're right. So do you think he's innocent, Brenda? No, I think he's guilty, and I think he should go to jail for life. All right, Brenda, thank you very much for your call. What if it's all said and done? Coley's not guilty. He's innocent. So no matter what, this guy's being crucified and judged in the media, and that's another life destroyed. It's sad. These are two kids. But at the same time, if he is guilty, he does need to be in jail for the rest of his life because Brian's mother and Brian's dad cannot get another moment with their son. So this is all I have, man. And I wouldn't call this much of a plan. Could be better, but, you know, Jackie really believes what Coley's telling him. I know my son, and he wouldn't do this. And he wouldn't think. And do you still believe that this boy did it? There may be a bit of doubt. Hmm. I wish everyone asking me that would stop. I'm fine. I feel bad. It was my party. You weren't handing out guns at the door, were you? Look, I didn't know Brian that well, but he seemed like a nice guy. Is there a reason you're talking to me, Zoe? Look, my parents died. Car crash six years ago. I still don't talk about it with anybody. Not even my sister. I was about the time I moved in with my uncle and aunt. You were with him that night, Coley? Yeah. He seemed like a nice guy. Yeah, he does. Nobody can say he didn't have it coming. He pissed off a lot of people. But he was good to me and I loved him. He had such an ego, you know? He was so confident. That's why I liked him. No. I loved him. Brian could always hold a grudge. 
Yeah, I never thought he'd end up dead. Hello, Mr. Mannheim, is that right? Yes. I'm Nancy Abbas. I work for Corey Stiles. We were just wondering if you'd answer a few questions regarding the murder that took place next door. Please, come in. Come in. Okay. So you were outside that morning. Mm. Must have heard the gunshot pretty loud and clear. I did. I know the sound of a gun. Ranger, retired. A gunshot here? It's about as foreign a sound as you can get. So, I mean, what did you do when you heard the shot? Well, I ran toward it. I figured someone might have gotten hurt. It only took me a minute to pinpoint the direction, but by the time I got close enough to see the Sutter Mill house, all I could see was that car taken off down the road. What car? I just saw a pair of red lights speeding off, getting smaller and smaller. Body type was like a Tesla or a Mercedes. Okay. And then you saw Brian. Hello. I saw someone, a body on the ground, and by the time I got back down, it was Bill holding his son and that black boy right beside him. Bill Suttermill says he found Brian around 440. This man heard the gunshot at 430, it took a minute or two to locate the source, so the car drive away and leave Brian alone. And Bill comes out at 440 and sees Coley there with Brian? Why would he come back if he was the killer? No, that doesn't mean anything. Jackie, it's our first break. No, I'll tell you what this is. You think I'm a murderer? The guards look at me like I'm nothing. The dudes look at me like a pushover. Are they keeping you safe? My roommate is a priest. He's cool, but once I go to the cafeteria, once I go to the gym... We may have a witness. A man says he saw a car pull away just after the murder. It was before you went back. That's great. You should be a little happier, son. You think I'm a murderer? I was here, she would believe me. No, son. I didn't raise a murderer. And your mother, your mother does believe you. She saw everything. She has the best seat in the house. And your mother knows you didn't kill that boy. Do you understand? Just want to go home. I didn't kill nobody. 107.5 WGCI. You're live with Kendra G. You know today is trial day. Cody Styles is facing life in prison on trial right now as we speak. If Coley Styles were white, would we be having this same discussion? Absolutely not. First of all, you'd have no reason to talk to me. He wouldn't be in jail. All rise. The prosecutor is also black, AJ Canton. He's also from a similar background as Coley. I mean, uh, why is he taking this case? What is his personal motivation? Well, I, I think it's a high profile case, career aspirations. Think about it. I think it seems pretty obvious, or there is an obvious answer at least. The Honorable Judge Renita Haley presiding. You may sit. Coley is also being judged because of the stereotypes of Chicago right now. Mm -hmm. The inner city's pulling for Coley. But meanwhile, I feel like everywhere else, they're kind of, everybody thinks he did it. Brian and Coley had a contentious relationship, did they not? They got into it the first time they met, if that's what you mean. A fist fight? Might as well have been. Well, what was it about? They just didn't like each other. Now, Brian and Coley rode home together. Could it be they patched things up? Maybe, but if you knew Brian, you knew he had a pretty hot temper. He could be your best friend one minute and your worst enemy the next. How long had you and Brian been dating before he died? Two years. Wow. It's a long time for two teenagers. I know, but we were in love. And that night, when you saw your boyfriend for the last time, what was his demeanor? Why this conversation is over. This conversation is over. I loved him, but sometimes it was just like you flipped a switch. Mm. Then is it possible that night, despite Brian's good mood, that he may have flipped the switch, as you said, and antagonized Coley Styles 
And in turn, Coley may have flipped the switch on him. I guess so, maybe. Yes. You were there the night of that basketball game, right? What was your impression of Coley? I just want to see what you can do. You keep pressuring me, I'm going to show you what I can do. I got a bad vibe. Elizabeth, did you feel safe around him? No. No, I didn't. Thank you. The latest developments in our ongoing coverage of Black, White, and Red. With the trial of Coley Styles well underway, speculation is circulating as to whether or not Assistant State's Attorney and mayoral candidate A.J. Canton will once again be flagged. We have all these anti-gun programs and anti-drug programs, but there's no program strong enough to counter bad influences. Turn that off. In more ways I want to see you on TV. I said turn it off. A.J. My team and I. All right, don't talk to them like sure that. that they care about you and they're interested in what you do. I know, Dory. Besides, seeing you on television like that kind of makes you a little famous. Hmm. <laughs> I'll do what you got. Hey, guys. Are you mad at us? No, nah, buddy. Daddy is not mad at you. I just didn't want you guys to see me like that. But you've been on TV before, Dad. I've seen you get interviewed for things lots of times. I know, and you're right. But this time, this case, what they're saying about your dad and what my plans are, this time is different. Do you guys understand why? Did you do something wrong? Are you going to be in trouble? No, 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 no. I'm not going to be in any trouble, all right? Why were you so upset? Was it because of what happened at the barbershop with Uncle Ronnie? A little bit. But look, what I want you guys to understand is that God made this beautiful world of right and wrong. And sometimes it's just that, black or white, no in between. But sometimes the world shakes things up a bit and gives us this lukewarm gray area. And that's what's happening with your dad's case. A lot of people out there, especially the media, are going to try to take advantage of the community and everyone in it, and their biggest piece of ammunition is your father and what his plans are. See, they're going to try to paint me as a bad guy. And I just hoped I could still be your hero for just a little bit longer. Don't worry, Daddy. I won't let anyone put any pain on you. <laughs> Come here, little man. <laughs> you two, get over here. Come on. Daddy loves y'all. Mm, my babies. Mm. And you too, my big baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you. You may call your next witness. The state calls Marcus Jones. I tell you the truth, May May. I don't like people like you. And I know if I dig around, I'm going to find a family of people just like you. Mr. Jones, please face me. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. And look, May May, you saw the Coley didn't pop Brian, right? So we need you to testify under oath. Test? Come on, man. You got my sheet. I walk in that room, those people take one look at me, and they're gonna think I'm lying. You got a brother, 23. You got a crackhead mama. Lord have mercy. And you got a daughter, little Tanya. You don't got a daddy no more, do you? Forget about what they may or may not think. We need you. What right? Coley needs you. You gonna help us? Now you're gonna tell me right now who did it. And tell me who pulled the trigger. Mr. Jones, you were 
at the party with Mr. Styles. I mean, you two were best friends, right? Yes. And you were with him the whole night from approximately 6.30 p.m. to 4 a.m., right by his side the whole time? No. He was in that girl's room for about an hour. I didn't see him again until after that. Will the court please allow me to present Exhibit G, a 9mm handgun into evidence? We will. Thank you. Mr. Jones, is this your gun? Yes. And how did it wind up in court today? The police, they found it out of my bed. Was this the gun used to kill Brian Suttermill? Yes. So was it you that shot Brian? No, sir, I did not. Okay, okay, so if you didn't murder him, then who did? Coley. What the objection? I don't know why. I had it on me when I got in the car. I guess he slipped it off. Your Honor, this is a clear violation of We will have order. Maybe that was his plan the whole time. To shoot him in the street. This is all they need. Coley. He's Coley. dead, Coley. Get in the car. We have no prior knowledge of this gun or this witness. Mr. Kenton here has clearly and deliberately withheld this information, and we move for a mistrial. Quiet. Ms. Sonny and I grabbed the gun and took off. I don't know if we can. The jury will ignore this outburst. Sir, man, you saying I put We the will have order in you this You killed Brian. Yes, you pulled the trigger. Mr. Jones, that is enough. We're not showing that. You can't help Coley. I want to, but I can't. You know what that is? Why are you doing this? Because you pulled the trigger. You Please. killed Brian. We get no discovery, and then the prosecution whips out a gun. This jury can't unsee that pistol, and they can't unhear that false Calm testimony. Calm down, Mr. Stiles. What is this? At the end of his case, Your Honor. And for a lack of a better term, he just heard the last nail hammer into that coffin, and understandably, they're panicking. Neither ASA Canton nor the state's attorney's office provided any information regarding the discovery of this gun. Canton deliberately withheld this information, thereby robbing this defense of the time to prepare a proper cross-examination. He's just mad his son's little hood friends are gonna back up this nonsense story. You have no idea what you're talking about, Your Honor. If you're not going to give me the mistrial, the least you can do is sanction the prosecutor what? by tossing out the witness's entire statement. Your Honor, we can see that he is clearly blind and distracted when it comes to his son and justice for Brian Sutterman. That is enough. Now, Mr. Canton, is he right? Did your office withhold this information from the defense? Yeah. And think before you answer me. Yeah, I know. We only became aware of Mr. Jones's desire to testify this morning. Up until then, we had no intention of putting one of the defendant's best friends on the stand. That's nonsensical. What prosecutor in their right mind would do something like that? And yet you did. Marcus reached out from Cook County and requested to be here. He said that he had to tell the truth, that what was going on was eating him up inside. You got to be kidding me. Oh my God. I'm sorry. This is classic sandbag. Oh, come on. You can't just pop up with evidence in the middle of a trial and expect me to cross-examine. And, and no way would May May, my son's best friend from childhood, suddenly want to just flip and make those outrageous statements. I've known that boy too long. He wouldn't. Your Honor, if he would check with the prison, I'm sure there's a record of the call. And then he can see that when we got it and followed up, there would be no time to have this formal sit-down discovery session. What about the gun? That came even later, Your Honor. I promise you that everything is legit, legal, and on the up and up here. I'm sorry, man. All right? I truly, truly am. Don't apologize to me. You apologize to my son. You're saying over. Styles is falling apart. His case is paper thin, and it's already started to crack and wither away. Yeah, I see it. I'm sure he sees it, too. You don't sound too pleased with that. You're not a father. I'm not sure, I mean, most likely we got it right and Coley killed Brian Sutter Mill. 
But that man is still in there fighting for his son's life. Well, let's not forget who he's fighting against. Don't start doubting yourself. That would be suicide. It's not about me doubting myself or not. It's about father or father, what that man must be going through. Look, I'm about to shatter what little bit of a world he's been able to hold on to. And I'm going to do my job. Doesn't mean I have to like doing it. Just make sure you do it. Three, four. All alone again. Evening time. The feeling time. Samuel Billings, the interpreter of the voice of God. I go to church. I have my whole life. I know God. I know right from wrong. But you, I can't even take you seriously for a minute. Was my son perfect? No. But he didn't deserve what he got. I've seen you on television. Heard your interviews on my son's case. You're a performer. Is this a church or is this a concert venue? All right, Mr. Suttermill. Out of respect for your situation, I will allow what you said to be forgotten, but please don't let this outfit fool you. Jesus is still my Lord, and if you keep going on the route that you're going, then the Lord will have to protect me from my next action. Are you threatening me? We come to this place of worship, making accusations, and you're asking me about that? Let's not make this about anything other than what it is. And what, what is it? I walked outside my front door, and I saw my son sitting in a pool of his own blood. I don't care what color cold he was. He murdered my son. Do you know how long kids have been killing kids outside of these doors? Is that supposed to help me? I'm sorry about those kids. I truly am. But my son is gone, and my wife and I have been drowning ever since. Because he was taken. Taken by a monster. A monster that Shanice was... Taylor Billings! Sir, she was my daughter. My heart. I held her in my arms. Okay? I felt her body turn cold. Two holes in her chest, and she was only seven years old. Ask me if they solved her case. Was this turned into a Black Lives Matter campaign? No. She wasn't gunned down by a cop. Was it a hate crime? No. She was riding on her power wheel, like she does every single morning. I went inside to get her a glass of juice. She was safe. 30 seconds. I came back and she was gone. Just like that. You want me to say I'm sorry? How terrible that must have been for you. Mr. Suttermill, I don't want anything from you, sir, that you can't find for yourself. Your son is gone. There's another bright light of his creation just snuffed out before he had a chance to shine. And we are all the lesser for it. All of us. You, you really have to give yourself permission to change course. This is more than just a coat of paint that I'm spraying, Mr. Suttermill. We may not be able to see past each other's weakness, but we can all find common ground. Father God, I come before you in prayer, dear Lord, to help us understand the things that we just don't understand. So just give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the heart to receive your truth. Even when the situations are tough, we honor you and we thank you for this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. We're debating all this nonsense. You're bringing race into it that I don't think is fair. It's, it's getting away from us. And you know, the body is still in the morgue because mm. it's uh, part of a crime investigation. Like we have the body of Brian Suttermill just deep freezing on ice. So they can't release the body to the funeral home. Oh, that's so sad. Sometimes it takes tragedy to really discover what's the best in humanity, what's really in, deep down inside of us. If someone died. So as we sit here, uh, you know, with all our theories and everything, playing amateur Columbo, I want to dedicate this program to Brian Suttermill. And Coley, hey, you who right Brian's now is sitting name? in jail, accused of a crime. I want to dedicate this program to the guy that was killed. Brian told me he'd be heading out to UIC with some friends. I figured he'd be going out to college on a basketball scholarship come summer anyway. He was ready. So I figured, sure. He took off around 6. Turns out he stayed right in town to go to a party that night. And when you opened the front door? I thought I saw a ghost. Because that couldn't be my boy laying there, no way. I mean, 
Things like this don't happen to boys like Brian, no. I mean, we live in a good neighborhood. This can't happen in Winnetka. This is exactly why we left Indiana. Now I see the blood pooling up behind his head. There's a hole going right through it. I mean, right, right here. He should have been playing ball this weekend. You know, he's been talking about his game every night over dinner. I, I'd, I'd hugged him just a few hours earlier. And did you see anybody else out there? Yes. I didn't get a good look at him at first. All I saw was blood. I, I saw his, his legs, his, his chest, his hands. They were all painted red. Well, when I got a good look at his face, it was blank. Can you point him out in the court today? Mr. Sutterman, you've already lost a son. Here, I risk losing mine. Sir, did you see Coley Styles pull the trigger? No. So, you heard the gunshot, but you didn't come downstairs right away, correct? We don't hear guns in my neighborhood. It was a bit startling. So how long after the time that you heard the gunshot before you'd gone outside? Five minutes. Hmm. So five minutes after you heard the gunshot, you went downstairs to see the person that you believe to be the killer. Yes, I saw your son. I believe I made that quite clear. Sir, what is the likelihood that someone who just committed a murder would stick around for five whole minutes at the crime scene? Wouldn't they run away immediately? Mr. Stiles, I'm a professional psychologist. People do all kinds of things for unexplained reasons. What is it that you want me to do? Provide an alibi for your son? And how do you know he was a drug pusher? A friend of mine bought from him, got screwed over. So it's likely that Brian had enemies, huh? Objection. This is all hearsay. How about we just stick to the night in question? Your Honor, can I get just a little bit of leeway here? I'll allow it for now. Miss Swanson, you invited Coley to your party personally? He seemed like a nice guy. And how did he get along with the other guests at the party? He blended in just fine. People seemed to like him. Now, he'd been drinking. Did the intoxication affect his temper? No. He was a fun drunk, not a mean drunk. Now, were you ever at all intimate with him that evening? Objection, Your Honor. Building to the suspect's state of mind moments before the incident, Your Honor. Just... Mr. Canton. Sorry, Judge, it's fine. It's fine, Judge. Uh, he's just grasping at straws, I say. Let him grasp. Objection withdrawn. We kissed. That's it? That's it. He was respectful? Yes. So you felt safe in his company? Yes, I did. You're sure that's the vehicle you saw leaving the scene of the crime that night? Yes, sir, that's the car. No more questions. Uh-oh, it seems as though we got ourselves a ghost car here. <laughs> Stop me when I've said something that isn't true. You don't know who the car belongs to. You didn't bother to write a license plate number down. And as far as you know, this car could have just been passing through the neighborhood. No, I saw. It, it was stopped, then it took off. Uh-huh. Let me ask you, how thick are those glasses anyway? <laughs> Stay here. They think they're going to get me by. I love you. We're going to get through this. Now, when we get in here, you're going to be under a microscope. It's not what they know, it's what they can prove, right? Now, every remark that is made, they're going to be looking to you for your reaction. And that's how they're going to make their call. So, 25% is what they hear. 75% is what they see. So let's make sure they see the right thing, all right? Don't slouch. You look good, right? I love you. I love you too, son. Mr. Stiles, have you any more witnesses? I'd like to call to the stand Coley Stiles.
Mr. Stiles, please raise your hand and repeat. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Please sit. You a God loving man. Yes. Then you will be vindicated. The defense rests. Mr. Canton, do you wish to cross-examine? No more questions, Your Honor. Very well, as it is already after four, we'll recess for the day and start with closing arguments first thing in the morning. Imagine what Mr. Stiles was going through with his son, locked up. Exactly. By all accounts, a promising guy. This guy is on his way up, the father, in my neighborhood. And uh, this uh, this nightmare. And then, of course, um, coming up this weekend, the Suttermill family is going to bury their son. Hello, detective. I didn't want to do that to Cody. They blackmailed me. May May? Check this out. I saw a dead boy and his girl fighting that night. Can we have a conversation about this? I did have a conversation with you. There's nothing to talk about. I barely spoke. Do you want me to take care of that? Don't do that. Do you think that this is a good idea? I guarantee you, you will screw this up. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't... Are you gonna help me, man? Elizabeth Chu, please. My name is Frank Kaczynski. All right, I'm a private detective, and I have reason to believe Liz might have information that can clear my client. Information? Yeah. What are you talking about? What client? Uh, Cody Styles. The boy who murdered Brian Suttermill? Allegedly. Get off my porch. No, please, sir. If you just get Liz, we can clear Okay, look, Kaczynski, or whatever your name is, you understand I'm a police officer, right? Now, I can have you on the ground and in cuffs before you can even say arrest. Walk away. No, you don't understand. A young boy's life is in Stay down to 
Uncle Hank, Aunt Rose, I'm sorry. I'm sure I'll see you again, but for now, so long. That's enough, please. Can we just have one conversation we about this? About you you seem like a nice guy. Did you feel safe around Coley after what had transpired? No, I didn't. Nobody can say he didn't have it coming. He pissed off a lot of people, but he was good to me and I loved him. I have been shocked at the rush to judgment that has been going on all along the way. I'm gonna quote my mother and just say, shame, shame, shame. There's plenty of blame to go around. Those who were wagging their fingers, pointing them, those who did not lend a hand, we were too slow to solve the problem. Lord help us all. When Coley got arrested, I tried to convince myself I didn't care. I had to do what I had to do. Good morning to the people of the city of Chicago. It is so wonderful to see so many of you here celebrating the life of this young man. Yes, that is what I said. That's right, I said celebrate. I mean, to the naked eye, it is a tragedy that this young man's life be cut so short. But we're here with soulful eyes. And soulful eyes see that this young man has gone to be with the Lord. Thanks for the ride anyway. It was enlightening. Anytime you want to talk. I mean, just think. I mean, we can only speculate what the face of Jesus looks like. I need to talk to you, face to face. Do I have to? I'm already here, please. I got a killer hangover, and on top of that, you're gonna yell at me, so can we please just do this some other time? I love you so much, Brad. You already know I'm going to college next year. Liz, I got a scholarship at State. I don't need this on my mind. I'll take care of it myself. No, you won't. You don't do anything for yourself. You'll take care of it for a few weeks, and then you'll come knocking at my door, and that's not fair to me because I never asked to have a kid. You don't want me. Please, just, just get rid of the baby. Oh, well, he forgot his wallet. Liz, I have a life to start. Now you can come along if you want, but if not, that's on you. <laughs> I'm tired, and I'm hungover. I'm going to bed. Buy this. <laughs> I got this on real quick. Make a pick when Todd's on the beat. Please don't do this. Hold on, wait. Liz! What do we look like with this right here? This is not a good look, fam. You gotta go. No, man, we can't just leave him. Oh, man, what you talking about, man? Think about it. I, I see this move go. Oh, man, let's go. You know I ain't clean, man. It's all they need, bro. Yo, Cody, are you coming? Oh, man, we gotta help him. He's dead, Cody. Get in the car. Cody. I mean, look at your neighbor. You run your own ticket, dog. Our eyes are our shackles, ladies and gentlemen. Help! It will only be on the day that Help! we can look at each other and see the Lord. Brian? That we will be free. <sighs> Mr. Styles, Mr. Styles. No major head injury. Well, he had a collapsed lung. We had to insert a chest tube in order to re -expand. Is he going into surgery? No. That didn't make it worse. <laughs> He's endured a lot of trauma. It's still too soon to tell. I'm sorry. Good morning, Chicago. Drown out the social media, turn off the television, get into the silence. And when you tap into that silence, listen to your own heartbeat. 
Listen to the times where you needed someone to show you grace and no one was there. Be the change you want to see. This is a day for mourning, not a day for politics. No more questions. Please excuse us. So please, offer your eyes and ears to our friend, Mr. Jackie Styles. I stand here today having been challenged as a father. Such a young life was lost in such cold fashion because of the lack of warmth in the hearts of humanity. Some would say we live in a fallen world, but as I stand here and look out, I can't help but see hope for a brighter day. He did that. Although he lies sound asleep, his voice is louder than ever, strongly urging us to fight our hate, to live better than our ancestors could have imagined, to the Sutter Mills, to Brian. Let us lift them up in prayer and extend a hand towards them. To a young man who was loved so much, we say good night. We will see you in the morning. And to the world, I stand here and I say good morning. We are just getting started. Listen to your own heartbeat. Listen to the times where you needed someone to show you grace and no one was there. And when you hear that heartbeat, you'll see that the heartbeats don't tell us whether or not we're innocent or guilty. It just says that we're humans. And so I have a special message.